Hey, welcome back to uh, Motor Bomb Virginia channel. Uh, I do use Adobe Premiere Rush to do, it's basically beginner editing, really. Uh, it, it has everything I need to do to make a very nice Moto Vlog video. So this would be, you know, something for, I guess, anybody who wanted to, you know, edit their videos. But if you want to watch some in specific motor vlogging and how I take different camera angles, uh, make transitions, uh, cut and splice, the whole process. I'm going to do a little live kind of tutorial here and show you how this program works. I already started a project and in this project, I have a helmet with the with the uh, Hero 11, and that's where all my audio will be. The next layer, which you, I'll show you these layers, will be my chest cam. And I was experimenting using a Bluetooth microphone, so I got two audios that I can mess with as well. And the third layer will be my rear camera. I'll show you how all this stuff works. Okay, so I've already came over here. You add this add button. You can go to your, your media that you want to get. This is my desktop. Uh, otherwise, I can go through here. And wherever you have videos stored and saved, like I have, I really recommend using... Uh, these nice Samsung uh, external drives. Keep all your video files on. And there. You just start, you know, I rename all mine so that I know which order I want them in. Usually they come up in order here, but this goes from 1 to 10 to 11 to 12. And all that is kind of wonky once in a while. I don't know why. But anyway, you just pick one of these. You can either click and drag them in yourself like this here that's the last layer that i have this only comes with four stacking layers each layer is a camera or something separate that you're going to add to your video i don't need this one this is from some old bam footage but that's the only one it shows and because i have it stacked on top of everything else so underneath is you're not going to see it. If you do want to see it, there's a couple ways to do it. You come over here. You have uh, you have your graphics. You have your effects and transitions. Every time you splice and cut your video, you can make a little transition. Uh, color adjustments right here. Over here, we have speed. If you want to speed or slow up a section of your video. Uh, right here, we have your audio. If you want to balance it, uh, do some corrections to it. Maybe mute out some background noise. You have lots of variables in this one. Here we have the crop and rotate, which I use right now. You just go through all these uh, different commands that you have and options, like horizontal positioning. You move, move stuff left and right. If you want to reset it, you have reset right here to default. Boom. Sometimes it blows it up if it's a bigger uh, file. So you just hit fit. But usually it'll be the uh, exact same size, depending on what you shot, shot them in. You know, 4K, 1080p. I think that's what affects it once in a while. I'm not sure. I'm just going to show you how to add this stuff. But you have things that can fix those problems. Oh, that was great. And you have things that can fix those problems. So let's see what we got here. Opacity. Opacity means how transparent your layer is going to be. So if I wanted to slowly make a transition, I could actually cut out the section that I want and change each opacity uh, segment that I make to be lighter and lighter and lighter and using transitions to patch those splices up, 
you can create some pretty cool things. But anyway, if you don't want to see uh, what's up above here, you can either shut the opacity off, which that's what I usually do because I might want to see some of it later on. Otherwise, over here to the side, you have an eyeball. It says it's for visual. You shut that whole section off. Boom. Same with the audio. And if you want to lock the layer so it doesn't get cut, damaged, moved around, however you want to use this button, you can use that. So I don't need this one. This was just to show you. We're going to hit delete. I right click, I delete. I can come over here. We have uh, all your uh, tools as well to delete. Is here. I press back on the uh, layer. This will sh allow us to show all these controls over here. There you go. If I want to make my audio, which is underneath the actual video part, all these here are your audio stuff. You can make it smaller or you can enhance it. And you can do that on any layer you want. You just can't do them all at the same time. All right. It's a lot, I know. So if we bring that in, you also have your graphics over here, which is the same thing over here. Want to add graphics. That's basically what it did there. Audio. You go get these audio files. If I want this, I can uh, check and see what it sounds like first by. By playing it. And uh, for this section, you just hit more. And you can go through everything that they got. You might like something cinematic. Ooh, it gets loud. Uh, but yeah, and you can search if you want something in specific. I mean, there's sound effects, uh, looping, uh, tracks, you name it. And it's got a good variety. Once in a while, heads up, you'll get a copyright claim, even though this stuff is free. But. All you have to do is open it up in your Creative Cloud, which if you get this Adobe Pressure, Adobe Premiere Rush, you can get the uh, Creative Cloud, and you go in there, search that music, and find the licensing for it. You get a licensing, you can dispute the claim, and you're good to go. Okay, so we went through some audio. You can also do a voiceover. Um, right now, it doesn't look like... I have an audio device that is working. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit and see if I can get it to hook up. We'll be right back. So this is uh, this is good too. Did you see where I went? To It's at, told me to go to preferences and menu. So just check out all these. Oh, edit. We know we have preferences. There we go. Now to do a voiceover, all I have to do is I usually I would put, you need to put on headphones when you do your voiceover. Because if you have your audio, if you have your audio coming out of your speakers and you're doing your voiceover, which I have my mic right here, you don't want to be picking up that into your mic so mics are really good and you can get away with it but i always suggest putting on your headphones and you'll just eliminate issues plus you'll hear better what you're actually uh, going to hear when you produce your final result so let's do this voiceover i'm going to do it without putting the headphones on i don't have it really yeah handy for me right now i don't think she has a there we go. I just turn this down a little bit. And if I want to do a voiceover and start explaining, um, there's our 7-Eleven over there that I never stop at. I go buy it every day. And I can add this to 
uh, dead spots or if you had bad audio, uh, something happened to your mic while you was vlogging and you remember most of it, you can come in here and just re-put in your voice and voice it over. Great. Let's see how that works. I'll come back here. And if I just want to hear what my new voice sounds like, I'll just shut this whole layer off because this is the only layer right now that has audio. All these I shut off. I don't need audio from my, this is my rear camera. You see how that is? I move that over. This is my chest camera that I had mounted here. And this is the helmet cam. So yeah, I don't need those right now. We're going to leave those right where they're at. Let's go listen to what this voiceover sounds like. I'll click and highlight it. I'll come up here to where I know my audio is. It's the audio section. And I usually just hit automatic volume. You know it's a voice. You can hit voice. Even in my helmet cam, I usually just hit voice. When you hit voice, you get all these selections. If you don't hit voice, you don't get all those selections. I like to be able to have the balance, the reducing background at times, uh, echo, enhance your speech. You can enhance it to higher or lower. Let's, let's go with lower so I sound more masculine. Let's see what that sounds like. Here we go. I just turn this down a little bit. If I want to do a voiceover and start explaining, um, there's our 7-Eleven over there that I never stop at. I go buy it every day. You get the gist of it. Sounds good. So we're going to delete that. As long as that's the only thing highlighted, I can come over here and I can hit the delete button or I can point to it, right click and hit delete clip. There we go. Sometimes um, when you delete like like if I wanted to delete this section here, it'll delete this row and this row as well because it's attached to it. That's when the lock button comes in. If you lock those layers, it'll only delete this uh, bottom whole section if that's what you want to do. We're not doing that. So I'm going to turn my uh, volume back on. Let's go through this. See, I just slide this around. Uh, there's so many things to explain in this. Um, if you want to reformat, turn it to a vertical, um, resizing. I wanted to resize this rear. I just see how I clicked on that, and I clicked on the. These here will let you transform. You can also transform it over here with these buttons. You can rotate this thing. Uh, we want it, I'll just put zero back in there, keep it straight. Bring it up and down this way, left and right. With, just read what it says to do, the width. Okay. If I want to just crop it some, I can crop it. We have top, bottom, left, right. There's multiple things you can do. Uh, edge feathering. We can feather the edge, see? So it just kind of disappears right on out. Ooh, won't that look groovy? So yeah, fun stuff. Um, I experiment with that once in a while. But usually, I'm, I'm gonna reset it. There we are. I like to have the full screen look. Sometimes I'll show them up in the corner like I just, you know, just showed you if I wanted to show multiple uh, camera angles. I just set that right up there. Now we got to go to this next layer. Press on that. If we want these the same size, right, you can kind of generally get it like close like that. But to get it perfect, what you do is you go over and you figure out what your first one is that you liked. That was the top. I highlighted again. And we'll look at the size. It is 27. That is the width. Let's see what this one says. Oh, I got it right. 27. If it's not, put in 37. If you want it bigger, that's what it does. Just press it in and enter it. Or you can try to... Uh, it's 
a little less accurate and hard to do sometimes like that. So, yeah, move that over. There, now I can run everything just like that if you like. It's not a problem. So that's really cool. I have one, two, three layers so far. Up above, I have room, as I showed you earlier, for one more layer. Well, let's say I want to go back to my media. Here's where I save. I keep backspacing to get to the main menu. In my creative cloud, it's where I just happen to keep my stuff. I have a layer that I can set over top of everything that I usually use as a default. You just pick it, stick it in there, make it bigger. You want this to go the whole length of your, your film, however long it is, then that's how long you make it. Now look at that. If I want to adjust that, it's a little bit thicker than I like it. I remember a width that I have that I highlight it. 240, I think, or 38. I put in 240. There. I just want a little trim on the edge. I want my logo there. You know, maybe the motorcycle that I'm using here. I can swap that motorcycle easily uh, in Adobe Photoshop. I keep the Forgotten Angels logo here. And I keep the Forgotten Angels logo here. That's, you can see that was transparent. I kicked it back. I don't want it to block everything, but I still want you to be able to see it and know it's there. So that's kind of a nice little way to do stuff. Okay, here on the bottom, I'll show you. This here slides you left and right, so you can find where you're doing. You got your time stamps or whatever here. This is around 12 o'clock. We're going to go ahead and use this now. I usually wait till last. Now, if I double click on this bar down here or just pull it from one end or another, it'll go back to its full size. See, it's way over here and way over here. So what we'll do is stretch this whole thing out for the amount of film I've done already and edit it. This is all the edits I've made from all three cameras. This is some of the lettering that I used. And I see now that it's going to be kind of in the way of the Forgotten Angels. Maybe I'll just take and reset. Oh, got the wrong. See, I can go backspace up here. This will take your last movement away. And I'll highlight the proper one. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a little more accuracy. We'll zoom in. There we go. And pull that down out of the way. And if I want those to be exactly at the same height, I can go over here and I know I got 144 for vertical up and down position. Let's see what this one says. We want it. Let's see how that works. 144. Just easier to do this. 144, enter it. They should be same level at least. Let's see what happens. I'm going to unclick it so I don't. Back to the purple panda. So audio is Bluetooth. Back to the purple panda. So it stays kind of even. If you like to do that. Now we got that done. I'm going to blow this up again. And I'm going to stretch this out to about 13 minutes. I really don't want it to be that. This whole video that I shot much longer than 13 minutes. The way I know it'll stop. And I don't want this to get cut, chopped, done anything. So I'm going to lock that layer. Now we can't do nothing to it. Can't move it. Can't do nothing. Here are some ways... Also, if you want to make your visual of what you're doing bigger, 
or you can bring it back and make it smaller. I like, I think the computer works best if you don't have this too big. Also up here, um, we're going to find the quality view. We do the preview quality. I do mine at its absolute lowest. If you got a great computer with lots of memory, lots of uh, CPU power, go ahead and put it on high quality. It just works faster for me. So these are ways you can, you know, so it looks a little blurry when I move it and funny, but once I produce this whole thing at the end and uh, we, we put it all together and make the uh, actual video all into one, be perfect okay now we're going to actually do some cutting and splicing i've just kind of went through some basic um controls for you and things you can do but we're looking for observers today see i'll listen i'll see what i want everywhere i see these spikes is where i know i'm talking here is dead space I'm going to slide these out of the way because I don't want to use them right now. I'm going to see if I like this section of what I've used of what I said. So I'm going to listen to it again. Okay. The journey is not too important right here where I'm going, what we're looking at. I'm going to cut that. I hit the S button, which is for slice, or you come over here and you hit the you can hit the scissors, split your clip. So there, I know right there's where I start talking again. I can either hit the splice and splice this out, or I can just grab it, click and pull, and move it over. There we go. If I want to fine tune it and make less space in between what I'm saying. There. Let's listen to how it looks from there. There. You hear that little click? Here's what I do. We have what we call transitions. I usually just use dissolve. This is how long the duration of the transition is. If you wanted a nice slow transition or just kind of smooth, I just leave it right where it's at for doing this. It just needs to see nice little smooth transition. Watch how that went. I'm going to show you where the transition is. I'm going to blow this way up. Here was our transition right here. I don't want that transition no more. I highlight it and delete it. There's one for the audio, too, which smooths out your audio. When you cut it, sometimes it gives it a little click. So here's where you mess with your duration. Let's do it maximized. Now just watch how, see how long it keeps it transparent and clicks into one, into the other. See, you can almost see both images right there. Now, if we shorten this back to wherever it was in the default somewhere in there, we won't get it so much. Just a nice little smooth rub together there. See? Boop. Let's bring it back real long. Now watch me play it. See, that's too slow. Don't like it. I'm going to go down around the 50 area. I think that was defaulted. We'll go back and hit it again. Yeah, 50 was a default. That works fine. That's why I say uh, do these workflow things according to what your computer can do. That's why I use 1080p and only 30 frames. 24 frames works even faster. Quality basically looks the same as using 60 frames per second. 
The only time it comes into effect is when you're trying to do some slow motion. Say if I wanted to do slow motion, here's a slow motion. I'm going to cut it right here, and I want this section to be slow motion. I'll cut it right here. I'll highlight that section, come over to my motion, and uh, let's, uh, let's speed it up. I need 480. Watch this. See how fast that went? Let's slow it down. It'll look a little choppy because you don't have as many frames per second. So the transition between each frame will start looking choppy with 30 frames, 24 frames versus, say, 60 frames in that same amount. So that's how that works. Did you hear all that audio? Here's a quick fix. This audio, come up here, come back to your audio. Let's mute that section. There, we're going to mute this section. Here's where we can either do a voiceover or we could add some audio. Say I wanted some audio under there. Let's just do this. Um, if I hit add, it'll add it right underneath there. I got way too much. I don't need all that. So I'll just bring it to the end. And I'm going to cut it here. I hit my S on the keyboard for splice. Delete that clip. You can see the levels are way too high. Come back up here. There's audio. Hit automatic. There, see how it brought the levels down? Now we should match the rest of our... Uh, uh, movie here there dramatic it's all slow let's say i wanted to do a close-up on my hand back there when it was doing its thing like right there i cut that section out now we just bring this up a little bit let's see what that looks like there all kinds of cool stuff all right so that's one way to do that section that you uh did speeding up now if i had this at 60 frames per second it would just look a little smoother not that big a deal for a moto vlog okay I want to hit backspace on most of this. I'm going to backspace, backspace, backspace. Let's see. There. Okay, say I want to do something different. Say I want to keep my original uh, soundtrack that is in here. We would go back to this audio or to their speed. Let's see. Let's let's reset the clip. That'll be normal again. And we'll make a duplicate. I would put that right on top. I would use the audio of the regular clip unmute it let's listen to it all i haven't done nothing yet it's the same we're gonna see the same thing on top of each other but see how that's different now we want to highlight that we want to shorten it make it faster or longer all the way up to that clip we can do that and we won't have to hear all that stuff what it is, what it's like. See, it'll just show that, and I'll go over most of what we're looking at next. But that's just how that works. Just make sure you don't have nothing important there. If you want to just shorten that clip up, shorten it up. There you go. See, what it is, what it's like. And you're right back to whatever. Now, I hit Control and D, and it puts my 
transitions on that. It's just a shortcut for doing these transitions that I showed you earlier, these effects called transitions. Okay. And uh, you can use different ones. I just like to dissolve. If I use the black, it's going to do a black transition. If I do white, it'll do a white transition. I don't like it. I'm going to do a swipe left or right. That's what it'll do. Got to have this one highlighted when you make sure you. There, see that little line that goes across everything? There we go. We got a swipe. Put it back on here. Let's try a slide up. That's all. You just pick ones you like. I like. I like to dissolve mostly for most things. All right. That was just something to show you. Delete. I'm just getting rid of it. Don't want it. Seeing what it is, what it's like. That's how you can take a section and, you know, slow motion stuff. Have fun. Experiment with this stuff. Be creative. Know that once you make a that clip, you want to keep the sound. Make your duplicate, put it above. You can either mute the sound in your duplicate so you don't hear two different audio tracks. You know, you'll figure it out. It's not too hard. This is simple. Oh. Yeah, I did. I butter oil on the floor or something, but it is not just wiping off or scraping off the bottom of the boot. Yeah, I don't want all that. Third writer is done with his life. Feels like slippery luck. I think the retired rider is done with his life. I was watching a retired rider. Or listening to him. That was interesting. Let's see what we got here. Feels like slippery luck. I think I'll leave some of that retired rider in this video. I think the retired rider is done with his life. That was interesting. I don't want to show all that stuff. Just this. I mean, come up here and get rid of. That was interesting. That was interesting. Nothing else. Attracting some content. There, we'll start right there. Slide this over, cut it out. Attracting some content opportunity to him and to his channel see i'm using the space bar starts and stops everything wish i had another uh camera i'd show you what i'm doing on the keyboard but just when you have a keyboard you find shortcuts the space bar lets me start it lets me stop it if i want to uh splice something i know the key Let's see. I think it says the shortcut, what, what it is. Yes. Split your clip. See the S there? That's what it's telling you. That S is for your keyboard. Now I can see this section where I'm not saying anything. I don't want to use both. There we go. I'm sure it's not. Uh on purposely motivated it's just it's tough to make those decisions and that's part of the process we got to experience that process with him yeah and be supportive of his friends and neighbors i'm going to cut that out because i have a friend who uses that line and i don't think he appreciates other people using it he's kind of expressed that so Here's how you can cut that section out. And be supportive of his friends and neighbors. Right there, I saw the little split. Right there. I can cut that out. His friends and neighbors. And hit my space. Cut it out. Now watch this. You barely even notice I cut it out. Hear that little pop and click? 
we're going to hit a transition there. There, no problem. We did this transition, and we're going to get rid of all that mess of stuff. Just stuff I had on my mind. I don't need it here. Let's see what we got at the end. There. I don't even need all that stuff, but let's cut it out. See, it'll take these along with it when I hit delete. Watch. I hit delete clip, but it's going to delete all three rows. If I wanted to make sure it did, I'd highlight them, but I just know they're linked. Boom. They're all gone. Do I want my rear camera? It does wonky things once in a while. See you in a minute. I'm just going to get rid of it, and I don't even know why it's doing that right now. There we go. Oop, wrong one. Highlight the rear. Do I need any of that? Oh, that's not the rear. That's the uh, chest mount. We don't need that one either. We're all done. Takes a while. Sometimes you have to make um, this real big to grab this and move it if you needed to. When it's real small, it doesn't give you the option to mess with it. Like, like it'll still work but it doesn't work like that all the time. And I don't know why. It makes me out to be a liar. But sometimes, just be aware of it. That's all I'm saying. If you're having trouble, blow it up. Okay? You don't need that. Now, this is all for my trip home over here. I really don't need none of that. I don't think it was no big deal. And we got plenty of footage. Let's just hear it. Now, don't need it. Don't need it. Sunset looks cool. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just say that we're gonna stop this um, over here where we are at our destination. I don't think I want to keep all that, even though the sunset is cool. And I'll make another uh, yeah, really thumbnail for my video. Create it however you like. Part of the process. Okay, so say we're all done with this. I would get rid of all this. Let's do, just do that. If I can show you properly. There, I hold control. Or I can just... Do the left click and uh, see how I got a hold of everything. Let's do that again. Start right there. It's already highlighted. Left click and move up. And that selected everything. I'm going to go delete it all. I'll put a transition on that. I'm going to cut here because that way I don't have to go way to the other end. And get rid of because I don't want it to transition as we uh, start the video. Yeah. I'm gonna hit this one as a transition too. All right, see you in a minute. <laughs> there it is. And here's where I add my ending. I go in. If you if you have an outro, I do my own outros. I have my Harley. Outro, there we go, there's the Harley one. I might want to save the framing around it as well. Let's see what that looks like. See how it uh, misaligned? Like there's the blue thing. That's actually the head of it. It does that sometimes, I don't know why. All you have to do, go up here, close your program out. And bring it up again. We're so close to the end. I'm not going to do that. The eye came off. Let's put the eye back on. See, that works good. It doesn't really get in the way of anything. We keep the frame right up to the end. Everything plugged in. Put the mic up in my helmet. And there's the beginning of everything. As soon as I turn the bike on.
Yeah. That's the main thing. And then we'll get some playback. We'll see what happens. Those are all the edits. I think this one shows all the different clips that I use. It's all here. So if I ever needed anything, I wanted to see what I had as an inventory. Even my voiceover was still still there, which we never really used. But I have it there, and I don't need to add it. So I just unclick it. That's pretty neat that that's still there. Now, we are got the home. We have the edit. We got the share. We want to share this. Let's say we're done. We put a file name in, test. You go here, you figure out where you want to uh, store it to. I just store it on my computer's hard drive because it's only going to stay there long enough till I upload it to YouTube and I'll just delete the whole thing. You want to keep as much off your uh, hard drive on your computer and only use external storage for all your video files so that your computer has less to worry about, more resources, nothing clogging the brain up. It's going to interrupt the process of what it's really trying to do. Think of it as keeping its focus. We have advanced settings. You can go with automatic. We know we, we, we shot it in 10, 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second. It's in stereo and the quality is high. That's probably just fine. But according to some of the research I've done, it's better to go ahead and put it at the highest. YouTube, tell it it's 4K, ultra high definition. And it will stitch all that stuff together and make you one file that you will upload to your YouTube. And once it's on YouTube, you, it'll show that it's in 4K. What it does is it helps. It makes the file a little bigger and it kind of tricks YouTube into saying we've got 4K and it allows better quality. Don't quote me on all this. I've watched many videos that say the same thing. I'm just telling you what people have told me to do. And why not? You want somebody to see your video and see that it says 4K instead of 1080p? Sure. And then, you know, it's still it's still a high quality video. It's going to be the highest quality that you used um, to make your your video. So I hope all this was somewhat helpful. I just wanted to make it all all work out again real quick. Lock your layers. You don't want to see a layer. You shut it off. You don't want to see a layer, you shut it off. This layer was my chest mount. That's my helmet mount. See how the two are different? Gives you a different perspective. Hope you enjoyed this. You uh, get any questions? And if you know me personally, just hit me up. If you want to do a personal tutorial, join my StreamYard chat room um, as a member's perk. I'll do that for you. If uh, you still need help, even if you're not a member, give me a holler. Email me. My email is on my main page of my channel. Let's go check that out. Okay, we're back to my channel. To get a hold of anybody, usually on YouTube, if they've been generous enough to leave some contact information, this is where you can find it. You go to their homepage. Uh, you go to their more button. Talks about, you know, your, the page. Uh, links that I may have listed or they may have listed that they like. I also have a Patreon uh, haven't done much with that, so don't worry about it too much. And view email address. There we go. You can email me right there. And I'll see if I can help you. 
I don't know everything, but I can get you going. Hope that was cool and fun. And uh, any questions, like I said, let me know. Meantime, hey, peace. I'm going to bomb out.